Okay, so now it's time to initialize our views within our code. So we've added the three items to our layout and main.storyboard, and that was a text field, then we had a label, and then we had a button. So the text field handles the input, the label displays the input, and the button is what causes the label to actually display that text. Also we add in the, so we're going to add in the text field, the label and the button as outlets. So we've seen how to do this in the previous parts, adding in, field, or adding in labels and buttons as outlets. Now we're going to add in this text field and it's going to be the same way. So we're going to do that at the very top where the fields would go. And we're also going to add in a button handler as an action. So this is going to be the action that causes the label to display the input text. Okay, so now we're going to implement these views in our code itself and that's going to be in the viewcontroller.swift and that will allow us to actually change the properties and handle text and kind of trigger these events and do all sorts of things within the code itself because right now they're just displayed on the layout but aren't really doing anything. So let's go ahead and open up this split view and that's called the assistant editor. This is this two circles up here. So if we click this, it just displays a view controller in one panel and the main.storyboard on the other panel. So there's going to be two ways that we'll do this. One way will be the easy way and I'll do that first. And then the other way will be a little longer and a little more complicated. And I'll just go through the easy way all the way through first and then the more complicated way afterwards. Okay, so this is the easy way we're doing this. Now we have both files open. We can go up here and close this because I kind of want the space. And we can even close this side as well. So now we have our main.storyboard on the left and our viewcontroller.swift on the right. Just going to zoom into 100% here. We can zoom in even further because we're only really looking at this portion of our emulator. Now, in order to add these fields to the code, this is going to be the same way as we've seen before. And actually, we've already added a button and a label to the code already in the previous tutorials. So we're going to right click this or so you can either right click and drag alternately you can hit the control and control and drag uh, either way it's it's up to you I just kinda like right clicking personally it's one less thing to press so I'm just gonna select it right click and I'm gonna put it up here just underneath view controller and the reason I'm doing that is because I want these to be fields that I can use throughout every method within my code if I, to, if I were to place these within a function itself, then we can only use that within the scope of the function unless we declare them as global variables elsewhere. So right now, this is just going to be an outlet, these ones I'm adding at the top, rather than an action or an outlet collection. The name for this is just going to be, I'm going to call this txt, and because we just have one for each, I'm just going to call it text field. Okay, it's of type UI text field, and it's weak, which means it could contain the value of nil. So we're just going to hit connect, and again, this is what's going to. This is the the properties that we're going to include with it. Hit connect, and it appears up top here. So we get this weak variable txt text field, and so you type UI text field. Okay, so again, this just specifies that it's an IB outlet, so an interface builder outlet. The weak variable just means that it could contain the value of nil. This is the name we've assigned, and this is the type of variable and this just means that it's not optional. That should contain a value. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the button. So although we don't necessarily need this right now, we're just going to add it in anyway. And this is just going to be called BTN button. It's also an outlet of type UI button, again, weak storage. Okay, now that's added. We'll do the label. And this will be the last of the outlets. I'm just going to call this LBL label. And again, this three letter abbreviation at the beginning just helps me determine what it is. Although we've given these pretty obvious names such as button, label and text field, they might not be so obvious in the future. So if you're kind of naming these in your app, be sure to, well, I think it's a good idea anyway to include this three letter abbreviation, but totally up to you. If it's your app, it's your variable names. Okay, so now we've added the outlets. If we call any one of these outlets, that allows us to modify properties. For example, if we just look in this view did load section, and in fact, I think our text is a little small. So if you're having trouble reading it, just go to this Xcode. We'll go to preferences, 
and we can increase that I just have it as default I could have it as presentation or recording makes it very large I think presentation should be fine so I just select presentation there if we want to modify the size of it we can but just by going in here selecting all and clicking on the text field we can select a size and a font okay so that's just a little aside for you guys if you want to change the size of the text and uh, this is just under preferences so I just change the text to presentation to make everything a bit bigger okay and again that was just under this Xcode part here and we just go preferences okay yeah that's better much easier to read okay so now we've added our outlets again this allows us to modify properties such as if we go txt text field and then dot we have this huge list of functions and properties that we can modify okay I'm not going to do any of those right now that's for the next part of our tutorial for now all I want to do is I want to add one more thing and that's going to be the button action now we've seen how to do this in the previous button tutorial but I'm just going to refresh your memory so we select the button as before when adding the outlets and notice how this text says insert action outlet or outlet connect collection well we're going to add an action this time so instead of outlet we'll choose action and we see we get this extra field pop up the name I'm just going to call press button and it's going to be action and it's going to be under type we're going to select UI button under event it's going to be a touch up inside and argument sender we're just going to click connect and it adds this function that basically handles a button press so we don't need to call this function in the view did load or anything this function is run automatically and basically anything within this brace and this brace or anything between these two braces is code that's going to execute as soon as the button's pressed so if we put in something like change the label name to hello then it will do that as soon as the button is pressed now as for this naming typically uh, for my outlets I'll put outlet on the end and then for the actions I'll put action on the end I chose not to this time just because well for the outlets at least just because we have so few of them and it's very obvious what they are and what they're doing okay so just the key to naming your variables and, and methods or functions is just kind of to make them indicative of what they're actually doing so if it's very obvious what they're doing then you should name it something like that I mean if it's something like a button press you shouldn't name it you know like peel banana or something because that doesn't make any sense unless it's a function that is that has something to do with peeling bananas in which case it makes total sense okay so now we have it all set up we have our press button action function set up we have our three outlets so the outlets allow us to modify the properties we could call txt text field dot and then any kind of a function or a property and that allows us to modify that in the code this action function will handle the button press and in this part coming up we're basically just going to show you how to take in the code do something with it and then once the button is pressed we're going to display it in our label in this part we just initialize our views within our code so we had added them to the layout previously in main.storyboard but unless we initialize them in the code itself we cannot modify the properties or handle any kind of input so now by adding these three views as outlets we can modify their properties by calling the name of the outlet dot and then it gives us that list of functions and properties that we can add or that we can modify we also added that button action which will basically once, we're, once we fully implement it, it's just going to take the input text and it's going to change it to the label text. So we're going to implement this text handling the easier way first. So this is going to be a very simple way using just one function. And then we're going to use the more complicated way afterwards. And we'll look at the upsides and downsides of both. Okay, so now we're going to write the code to display the text field text in a label. So this is the main task that we've been wanting to do all along, and we're going to do it now. So we're going to see that we can accomplish this task with just one line of code in the button handler function. And that's why I said this is the easier way rather than the harder way, because all it's going to take is that one line of code within our press button action function. 
Then we're going to run the app and see it working so that we can actually prove that we can take this text input, press the button and display it on our label. Alright, so now we have everything implemented and set up within our code. We can actually write the one line only, that's all it's going to take. That's going to take our input text and display it in our label. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into our press button action function and we're just going to add the code in here. So remember this is a function that is going to basically perform all the tasks within these two curly braces once the button is pressed. So if we just take our, if we call the text field of our label, so this is going back to our label tutorial where we could basically assign text to our label and the way we did that was we called the label name which in this case is LBL label and we call dot text and what this does is it assigns the label text to be whatever we put after this equal sign okay so this should be a refresher for you and this nomenclature is going to become pretty commonplace uh, so kind of get used to this so we have LBL label dot text and that's just saying the text field of our label is whatever is here and what do we want it to be well we want it just to be the txt text field dot text okay so now we're taking the text field text so whatever text is going to be displayed in this field is going to be equal to the label text once a button is pressed so this means that if at the time the button is pressed this label contains or this text field contains a text hello then it will assign the label text to contain this text hello if we kind of half like start writing or start typing something but don't quite finish it but then press the button it will display that so the but this button will cause whatever is currently displayed in this text field box to be displayed on the label okay and that's what this one line is doing it's saying the label text is going to be equal to the current field text when the button is pressed okay so let's go ahead and see that in action because actions speak louder than words so we'll go up to this play button and make sure we have the iPhone SE selected so just it's fine to select a different one so there's a bunch of different iPhones that we can use and iPads just make sure it's the same device that you designed your layout on because if you haven't done that and you haven't assigned what we call constraints then we'll have sizing issues where these are a set size but the screens are all different so we're going to go and press this button which is going to what we call build it and then start the simulator so building is kind of the same as compiling in which the compiler or the builder is just going to check through the code and make sure that there are no errors okay so now we have our phone emulator started up this is the iPhone SE and this is what it looks like it should be exactly the same as what our emulator looks like here and it is so we have our text field we have our button and then we have our label so right now this is just saying display text from text field so let's go ahead and enter some text if we just say for example mammoth interactive notice how nothing has changed yet but if we click the display text button there we go our label text changes to mammoth interactive same with if we were to write anything else in here if we were just to write mammoth then we get that being displayed if we were to write hello that could be displayed if we were to just leave it blank then that also displays nothing there okay so we're taking the input once a button is displayed we're displaying it on the label so some kind of text and we'll leave it at that okay so now we know it's working fine once a button is pressed it takes this text here and displays it down here so let's just minimize that and we're just gonna stop running it okay so now we've seen it working it's gonna close it up there we know that everything is fine and this is a simple way to do it so we just assign the reassignment of our text within the button now we could do other stuff with this we could handle the text differently for example what we could say is we could do lbl label dot text equals this maybe plus you know some kind of a string such as um, and some other stuff 
and some other words. How about that? And that would be fine to do if we go ahead and rerun it. Uh, let's just see what the issue is here. Ah, I see. So oftentimes you'll get this issue here that says value of optional type string is not unwrapped. Did you mean to use the exclamation mark or question mark? So because these are weak variables, they could contain the value of nil. And so we never really, well, unless we use an if let statement, we don't necessarily know if it contains some kind of a value. If it's nil, then if it contains a value nil and we try and call it, then it will give us errors. So it might be a good idea to use this exclamation mark here at the end of text field dot text. And this will just say that assuming that there is some text, so assert that there is text in this text field, then we're going to display it. That way if this text is that way this text field dot text can never be nil. Okay? So if we omit this value, if we omit this exclamation mark, it might contain the value nil and so then we'd get errors. So that was fine for what we had before. Just keep in mind it might be good practice to get used to adding this exclamation mark after pulling text from a text field or even a label. Okay, so if we go ahead and rerun this, it will just build it again and rerun it on the emulator. And this is just going to display whatever text we have and it's going to add and some other words to the end of it. So we'll just select the iPhone SE. So let's just say hello for example, display text, and it says hello and some other words. And that's because we told it to take in whatever the text field has currently and then add on the string and some other words. Okay, and we're just going to stop running this. So we know it's working fine. Uh, this is just an example of kind of taking in the text input and displaying it on a label. So we can, we're going to look at the more complicated way to do this and then we're going to take a look at how to modify some of the text field properties. In fact, we'll end with how to modify some of the text field properties. So we'll look at the more complicated way to do just what we did and then we'll look at some other stuff we can do with text input and then we'll look at modifying the properties. In this part, we just wrote code to display the text field text within a label. So this was a task that we were trying to accomplish all along. So we simply went into the button handler function and we reassigned the label text to contain the text field text. So we've seen previously in the previous tutorial how to reassign label text and we simply just called label text dot text or rather the LBL label dot text equals the txt text field dot text. So we're taking the text from that text field and we're reassigning it or we're assigning the label text to contain that text as soon as a button is pressed. So we actually saw this running and saw that it worked well. And this is one of the simplest ways to, ac simplest ways to accomplish this task because we only use the one line of code within our button handle function. Now we'll look at the more complicated way to do it and then we can discuss the pros and cons of each.